Major fallout from WWE SummerSlam as we have an update on a potential major injury that took place during the event and also know more about early indications on how the show performed and was perceived. We're going to talk about ticket sales, revenue, all that kind of stuff and provide that injury update at the top. So be sure if you haven't already done so to smash that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released okay let's start off with the big news that being of an injury suffered at wwe SummerSlam, and that was to none other than bloodline member jacob fought too as you can see in this photo taken just mere hours after SummerSlam went off the air this was part of a video by the haroon boys on instagram you can see that Jacob Fatu sporting a what seems to be a walking boot on that right leg. And if you can look to my right, you can see the spot where he got injured on. Jacob Fatu took a dive off the top rope to the outside on through the announce table. And it messed up his ankle. It seemed like, it, like for, to me, I personally, I saw his knee hit the corner of the table. But I also, you know, realized that he probably could have fell with his entire body weight on his ankle. And that could have been a disastrous turn of events. And it was notable that Jacob Fatu, during this time, in like the seconds following this, was unable to get up and seemed to be very frustrated. This caused many fans to wonder, is he working? Is this part of an angle? Well, if it was part of the angle, it was a pretty awkward angle. And when whenever we see things like this that seem awkward, right, and don't really have a purpose or whatever, it, it tends to make us all lean towards this may be real. And the fact that he was walking around in a boot and that Triple H at the post-show press conference when asked about injuries said that, you know, Logan Paul and Jacob Batu were both a little bit banged up. He did not know the specifics at that point. He had just gotten done with the show and ran over to the press conference. But we have no official word on the injury in that respect. But seeing him in a walking boot is definitely not a good sign, especially when you consider Roman Reigns just returned. You have Jacob Vatu, someone who people believe, myself included, that is going to be a future world champion in WWE and you just look at his performance last night and the way he was moving around the ring, the way that he he was was captivating that audience. I think it's a no-brainer that Jacob Fatu versus Roman Reigns was a match that we were going to see at some point during this little mini bloodline feud. However, hope I mean again, I don't want to speculate too much, but it does not seem that that is going to be happening imminently. Hopefully, that is not the case, and Jacob Batu is ready to go, and it's just, you know, hopefully, like, not that bad of an injury, but seeing him in a boot is definitely not a good sign and could point to him being out for an extended period of time, and if that is the case, man, it is going to be uh, tough sledding for the bloodline, I am not going to lie to you, because... Outside of Tamatanga, one of the big things that's holding this together in the new bloodline was Jacob Batu. Like, it was him and Tama. Uh, I, I, Solo Sokoa is a very polarizing figure. I understand that they're trying to tell the story of him doing this hostile takeover. But the reality is, he is second rate to two of his own members, if we're being honest. And the idea that they would be taking orders from Solo just never really hit for me, and I think for a large subsect of the audience. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do here without, you could argue, one of the biggest pieces they had and one of the and the best wrestler that they had, for being honest, in that entire group. So going to be interesting to see what they do. Hopefully, hopefully, though, they don't have to worry about it too much. And Jacob Fatu is back and better than ever soon. But we will have to see what happens there. And guys, let's take a beat be sure to hit that like button subscribe and hit that notification bell and let's talk about summer slam updates as far as the business side goes so obviously last night's summer slam event was a very big and well attended show and one of the key questions that people had coming out of it was you know like 
what was the gate? What was all this kind of, like, what's the business side doing? And we have some answers uh, it, about that. And we can see here and pull this up. We have um, some updates from Paul Levesque himself about the SummerSlam event. Here it is. SummerSlam ticket sales. This is according to WrestleTix. Their last update on tickets distributed was around 55,858. WWE announced an attendance of 57,000, excuse me, 791. You compare that to last year's SummerSlam, according to WrestleTix, was 51,477. So big boost in ticket sales there as they go to Cleveland. And this is the first big show they've had in the Cleveland area like this. We also have an update on sponsorships. Paul Levesque confirmed that this SummerSlam set a record for gate sponsorships and merchandise sales as well as social media. And for comparison, last year's SummerSlam event in Detroit, Michigan had a gate of right around $8.5 million. That would shatter that record, it seems like. And mean that I mean the continuous streak of WWE being profitable and having these major shows is just gonna it ain't gonna stop anytime soon it seems like uh we got one more update here on the ability or sorry on the future of SummerSlam and that is Paul Levesque asked about the future of SummerSlam and whether this was the final one night event of SummerSlam and he said quote I think so of course SummerSlam 2025 slated to be a two or sorry 2026 excuse me slated to be a two-night event hosted in Minneapolis and in that is going to be a two-night stadium show and that seems to be the direction they are going in having SummerSlam two nights moving forward and if anything proved that you know SummerSlam could be a WrestleMania level event I think last night did and we are going to see WWE continue to do things like this. They're going to continue to try to make these events as big as humanly possible. They're going to try to make them as well attended. And 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 the, the spectacle being there is big as humanly possible. Personally, for me, I really, really enjoyed the show uh, when we were actually on the wrestling. We'll talk about the sponsorships because obviously sponsorships were a, a big piece of the pie here when it comes to the economics and what made this a viable show for them, but we also have to talk about from a fan experience why the ads are just horrible. So, but overall, I thought the show was great. I mean, the angle between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre I thought was amazing, spectacular. I know a lot of people didn't care about the friendship uh, aspect of it, but I did. I liked it. I was hooked. Um, obviously, the main event had very little heat until Roman came, but that was to be expected. It was not built in a great way. It was Solo Sokoa versus Cody Rhodes, it's not going to be a great main event. But the the finish really saved that. Match of the night, though, in my opinion, goes to Gunther versus Damian Priest. Honestly, this was my favorite WWE match of the entire year. I thought that this was a star-making performance for Damian Priest in every aspect you could want. From the ability to have not only a great match, tell that story, and, and you know feel like a champion. Damian Priest, more so than Cody Rhodes last night, felt like the guy, felt like the champion. And it, it's just a great moment for him and, and a validation for him. And you counteract that and, and add to that, I should say, his ability to tell that story with Finn Balor. And, you know, when he was in that sleeper hole and he was reaching over, he wasn't reaching for the ropes, he was reaching for Finn Balor because he wanted his hands on the man who basically cost him his WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And shout out to both of those guys, though. Gunther and Damian Priest absolutely killed it. Again, in my opinion, the best WWE match of the year so far. Then you had great angle with Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley to open the show. Thought that went off great. And, you know, WrestleVotes had reported that the bloodline was going to be very different. Sorry, excuse me. The Judgment Day was going to be very different uh, coming out of SummerSlam than it was going in. And... That is true. You got Liv Morgan, Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor. Like, where does Carlito's allegiance lie? Where does, you know, J.D. McDonough fit into all of this? We don't know yet. That's why you got to watch uh, Monday Night Raw tomorrow. But overall, really fun night. Um, the transphobe also lost. That's a huge dub. But, yeah, 
fun, fun show. Nia Jax coming out and winning the world championship. And if you notice this, when Tiff, when Tiffany Stratton came out to distract Bailey, after the match, Tiffany, who holds the money in the bank, was looking over at Nia Jax in that world championship. So definitely some story to be told there as we move forward. So that was a quick rundown of the show. I, again, enjoyed this. This, in my opinion, was the best PLE that WWE's put on this year so far. I thought it was better than WrestleMania. I think that, you know, outside of the ads, which, again, I will talk about in just a second, this was a great wrestling show. Now let's talk about the damn ads. Okay. So one of the big announcements going into the, this event was that Wingstop would be on the canvas in addition to Prime to serve as a key sponsor of SummerSlam. And we knew that this was going to happen. Mark Shapiro on the TKO calls has been talking about extracting as much value as humanly possible out of the canvas, out of the ringside area. And, you know, basically making sure that WWE is like, is there an empty space we can fill? We're going to put and, and slap a logo onto that because we can sell that. And that is where WWE is going. That is the direction of, of the business. That all being said, one thing that fans were very critical, myself included, were the endless, endless, endless amount of shilling and advertising during the show. I fully understand the economics of the situation. I have talked about the business side of things and why, from a business standpoint, it makes sense. As a fan, though, man, I do not need 55 ad reads in uh, uh, in that show. Every single break, every single match, just... Uh, and also, we're, we're presented by Cricket Wireless. Like, like I, I did not need... We, we didn't need the endless amount of shilling that we got. It just... It felt so forced. It took away from the show. It took minutes upon minutes on end. And then, also, like, in some of your most important matches, like the Damian Priest and uh, Gunther match... At first, it was so jarring because they had a big, like, uh, I don't even know what, what company it was, but they had a big, like, cellular company. out. It wasn't Cricket Wireless, but it, I'm just going to call it Cricket Wireless. They had a Cricket Wireless, like, logo slapped onto the screen, slapped onto the LED board on the ring and the LED board on the barricade. So, and you're seeing, like, lime green everywhere, and it's so jarring and weird. You're literally watching an ad. Mind you, this is while a lot of us are already paying for Peacock. So you add that, you add like these long, long promos for the people who even have Peacock Premium. On top of that, for the people who don't have Peacock Premium, they're seeing more and more ads. It just feels like half this show, a seven-match card, took over four hours to complete. And I would argue that over an hour at least of that was just ads. That is insane. That should not be the case. And... The fact that we're here, it just shows you where the business is going. It, it, this is one of my biggest like pitfalls with WWE PLEs. It's why, like, during last night's show, I was live streaming and I was like, oh, I can't do it no more. Too many ads. I need to be doing something else. It was. It, it, it's way too jarring. Way too jarring. I can't deal with it. Um, and again, I understand it's a business uh, imperative. And, and I understand that you need to be able to... Get as much value out of this and blah, blah, blah. At the same time, you can't let it take away from the match. And I thought the perfect balance of it was honestly at the main event when they had the Wheatley's uh, logo up on the canvas and everywhere. And it was like it kind of blended in with the barricade color. Like, do that. Don't give me lime green just splattered all over the ringside area and then the 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 apron. Like, that that, that is very distracting as a viewer. Don't give me a logo in the middle of the screen throughout the entire match. That is extremely distracting. It takes away from what I'm seeing. The focus is the ads, and it's not the match. And I understand that's kind of the point. But at the same time, we are trying to watch wrestling here. I understand you got to get your stuff off. You got to sell this stuff. But at the same time, you have to also make sure that your product is 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 the primary focus instead of these ads and wwe needs to find this balance it is extremely annoying i am obviously very much so uh you know passionate about this but they got to find this balance but again otherwise i thought best ple the wwe's put on this entire year let me know your thoughts about SummerSlam. let me know what you guys thought of this show did you like it did you hate it did you think that you know the ads were way too much like I did. I 
I'm just going to put it out there. I think it was a lot. Um, let me know. Also, let me know what you guys think about Jacob Fatu. And if you haven't already done so, do me a massive favor. Smash that like button. Leave a thumbs up so as many people as humanly possible see this video. Join the Real Take community. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released.